Welcome back. If I'd known how easy and quick it was to connect your Nova Plus 35 into Lightburn and start using it, I would have included it on my first install video. I'll show you how I connected it to Lightburn and let's give it a run today on LaserNug. Welcome back to the shop. It's an exciting day. It's the first time I powered up the Nova Plus and it appears everything seems to be running well. I've made sure that the emergency stop is up. It's not been engaged. My green light is on, the screen is powered up, all the lights inside are on. It's a beautiful looking machine. While I fire up Lightburn, you're gonna want the little packet that was clipped inside on your honeycomb that says key. Inside this little packet are two super important pieces of information. This gold card has all your scanning offsets for your machine, which you're gonna need possibly, and you're gonna need to keep forever. And there's also a thumb drive in here. And we're gonna need this thumb drive today. I'm gonna to hook the thumb drive into the back of the computer and let's jump into Lightburn and add that device. So we're gonna add this new device today. I'm gonna to come over here and I'm gonna click on devices. And it opens up the window and you can see I've got my bolt in there already as well as the Aurora light I had for a few months. And I understand I could add this laser one of two ways. I could do the find my laser command and I understand Lightburn will search to see if it can pick up the Nova Plus or I can import that file off the Thunder Laser's thumb drive that's connected to the computer, and I think that provides me a lot of the parameters and things ahead of time, so I don't have to do them manually. So of course I'm gonna do this step because I think this is easiest or best. We're gonna click Import. I'm gonna find my Thunder Laser drive. We're gonna go under Nova Series. They've got the calibration file for the camera. We're gonna need that on another day. Uh, and I believe communication setting for light burn is here. I'm not using Ethernet. I'm going to use the USB. Fingers crossed. I'm going to click on USB. I'm going to open that up. Ah, oh, there you go. It's added right here and it's labeled. And I believe I just click OK. Now that it's been added, I'm going to come here to the right and I'm going to highlight it. We'll see if it changes to ready right here. There you go, it's ready, which means it sees the machine. That's great news. Next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come up here to where you see the screwdriver and the wrench. I'm gonna click that. And you'll see it's showing me the width and height of my working bed. The origin is the top left corner, which is correct. Z controls are disabled, that's good. Got a delay already built in there. What's important to me is the enable scanning offset adjustments. And if I take a look, I want to make sure that these numbers here align with the numbers that I got on the gold card that's in that package. A thousand, yep, yeah, they're all in there. And they've added in all of the settings for you so you don't have to do anything. It's done. It was literally that simple to connect the machine. And I'm also really glad my USB cable worked. I'm going to put this away in my toolbox so we don't ever lose it. And now we're going to jump on Thunder Laser USA's website because in their knowledge base they have a starter materials list that we can load into Lightburn so we can test out this laser. Let's do it. And we're going to click on the articles, machine material library. And here we are. Nova Plus machine library is right here. I'm going to click. It's going to open up a file that has a .clb extension. We're going to download it to the computer. It's complete. Let's slide here back into Lightburn. I'm going to come down to the bottom where it says Material Library. I'm going to click on that and we're going to load that file from my downloads. I'm come to my downloads. It's right here. I'm going to click Open. And there's the library. Excellent. Great, and they've got a few different materials here with some starter settings. Excellent. Before I do anything else, I wanna make sure I save this material library by clicking the Save button. So now we're ready, we can throw a little design in there. I think I'm gonna do an engrave. What I think I'm gonna do based on this material list, which appears to be, you've got some acrylic, but you've got a number of different pieces of real wood. As you folks know, I've got a number of pieces of cherry, which is real cherry, it's not plywood. I'm going to grab my test piece. You may recall 
we did some testing on lenses a few months back on the bolt. I'm just going to use the other side of this. I'm just going to throw a quick little design and then let's jump in, apply some of the settings and get it placed into the Nova. It's going to take me a little while to learn this new interface. I know this is pretty standard on a lot of machines I've seen on YouTube. It's very different from the bolt. But I was able to pull up my file by pushing a file. It's here. Let's open this up. Put our piece of cherry in. Let me show you this. <laughs> I'm just going to raise the bed a little bit. I'm use my. Oh, there she goes. Nice. Look at that. Wow. Let's do an autofocus. Enter. Here we go. Okay, autofocus is set. I'm going to set my origin a little more over. Let's frame it. I'm actually using that USB cable to connect to this Nova Plus. If you recall when I got my Bolt over a year and a half ago, I actually used an Ethernet cable. I might be taking a bit of a risk. I've learned that USB cables don't run forever. In fact, the longer the cable, apparently you start to suffer signal loss. And although it may look like my computer is only about six, seven feet from the Nova, I've had to run that cable across the back, up the wall, over the ceiling, across the ceiling, down the other wall, and across to the front right-hand corner of the machine. So I picked up what's called an active USB cable. Hopefully this is gonna work fine. My understanding of it in my own words, so you'll see in the middle of the cable, there's a small block and what I believe that does is it re-amplifies the signal to push it further. Hopefully she'll connect up with any, no issues or any communication issues. And if not, I'll jump in the truck and we'll go find ourselves a big long ethernet cable and start again. Our first engrave. It's very light, but it's deep. Nice. That was just way too quick. I can't believe how easy it was to set it up. I understand that when you turn on the Nova, you're supposed to turn on the main switch, then the laser, and when you're turning it off, you do it in the reverse order. So we're gonna turn off the laser first, and then we're gonna turn off the main. This control pan is gonna take a little bit of learning, as well as that I now have air assist, and I've got a low and a high volume air. And my understanding is if you turn on air assist, for example, on a cut layer, the Nova will use the high volume setting at whatever PSI you've set it at. If you're engraving as we were here with no air, it'll use the low volume setting here. And there's two separate adjustments as well as the ability to test and too many other features, which I'm sure I'll tell you about in time. Thanks so much for joining me on the first run. I'm looking forward to be able to put larger materials and thicker materials into the laser and have all of the work done in here instead of on my table saw. Have a great week, have fun with your laser, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.